This is the Ethan Behrman Program on KGO 810. Well, it's, human psychology plays into so much of what we do, right? I mean, we have uh, forever. We fall prey to people who want to take advantage of our frailties and how we are so susceptible to uh, well being you know marketing but it's not marketing it's beyond marketing and i have uh, evolutionary behavioral scientist at the john molson school of business in montreal gad sad joining me on the phone right now gad welcome back to the show oh uh, thank you so much for having me good to be with you look i i it was so funny i was sitting here thinking about politics and how they sucker everybody in um, through it's basically typical marketing techniques and how I see that on TV sometimes with religion or even the radio. We hear this all the time, but, but it's it's all over the place. And I, no joke, Gad, and this is why I reached out to you again. I, I thought of you when I had that thought going through my head. I'm like, hey, I bet Gad has a great idea on how <laughs> all of this ties together. And so here you are. Right. I mean, you call it hope peddling. Tell me about that. Yeah, so basic, So in one of the chapters of uh, my trade book, The Consuming Instinct, the chapter is titled Marketing Hope by Selling Lies. And I basically argue that self-help gurus, medical quacks, and probably none better than religion are all very successful because they ultimately cater to some of our most basal Darwinian-based insecurities by providing us with hope. Uh, you know, are you unsuccessful in the mating market buy my book and i'll give you the seven set, uh, steps to find your soulmate are you a bad lover here are the steps for you to give a woman orgasm forever are you worried about your mortality swallow this religious p- pill and you'll live forever with uh, you'll be reun- you reunited with your dog fido and so all of these various forms of hope peddlers are successful because they offer you quote solutions for these otherwise intractable problems well, so so let me let me flip that around for just a second. You know, you talked about things like how, you know how to uh, get a date, or for example, are people sometimes just not they don't know, and so they need instruction. I mean, that certainly could be the case, uh, and so I'm not suggesting that all self help is is nonsense, but more often than not, what makes many of these forms of peddling successful is because they just give you hopes. So I'll, I'll give you an example. <laughs> There's a movement called uh, fat acceptance, right? And so what that movement basically says is, uh, look, it's all a big, large conspiracy. Excuse the term large. It's all a conspiracy that uh, being overweight is bad. You know, fat, so big deal, right? I mean, accept your body as is. People will love you as you are. Well, if I am gross grossly overweight and I don't wish to take the effort to, uh, you know, to, to lose weight, I actually want to sign up for that message because it gives me hope that actually it's only this conspiratorial beauty standards that's making, making it so that I don't find true love. So and, and as opposed to the, the health or nutritional ideas that may be, now, and of course there are certain, and I think it's a very small minority, that really do have specific um, hormonal or genetic issues, of course, right? Uh, of course. But I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an, another great example. There's a, there's a book uh, that was very famous in the early 90s by a feminist called Naomi Wolf uh, called The Beauty Myth. And she actually argued that, look, there is no such thing as universal beauty standards. Beauty is a social construction. Well, I mean, to some extent, it is true that some elements of beauty are socially constructed, but there are fundamental elements of beauty that are absolutely universal. For example, facial symmetry is something that is preferred in all cultures rather than an asymmetric face. But if I am, if I am somebody who actually is rather asymmetric, would it not be wonderful to hear the hopeful message that beauty is utterly socially constructed? And so there might be a world where I actually might be viewed as the most beautiful guy or girl in the world. And so, again, that book sold well because it told tons of women that there are no beauty standards. Each of you is equally beautiful in her own way. That's why it sold. So, and, and wait a second, I want to add to that, because I remember reading a study a few years ago where they, they did with the infants, right, where they showed them faces, and that completely blew away the idea. I mean, literally, like, 13-month-old, 18-month-olds who reached <laughs> toward what we would, what our society defines as beautiful, they reached toward those faces, and they didn't toward the ones that we, that our society would not teach as beautiful. So that, that's something really deep in us. That is, I 
I'm delighted that you mentioned uh, that study. That's actually one of the ways that evolutionary psychologists demonstrate that a mechanism is actually part of our biological blueprint, is to take children who otherwise are too young to have been socialized. They don't yet have, they haven't reached the cognitive developmental stage to be socialized and to show that they already exhibit that preference. And the studies that you've described perfectly fit that paradigm. It is absolutely true that children will either, uh, as you said, reach towards or gaze longer at faces that are beautiful and symmetric. And by definition, they couldn't have been taught that they're not yet cognitively developed to have been taught. Oh, that's fascinating. All right. So I want to get to the you know, a, a politics, right? I mean, this sure. election cycle has been something that's just going to be feeding psychologists and anthropologists and sociologists for a very long time, I think. Um, but but the parties, I mean, even if you ignore the presidential candidates for a second, if we look back at politics for a second, they, they're hope peddlers, right? If you just elect my guy, if you just elect me or my gal, whatever it is, if you just elect my person from my party, your life will be better. And can you remind me again the last time a political uh, politician or party actually fulfilled that well I'll, so i'll answer you with a quote by one of the <laughs> most famous politicians of all time if not a military conqueror napoleon bonaparte the french uh, emperor who basically said a leader is a dealer in hope right uh, or let's let's bring it much closer uh, temporarily uh, barack obama won a nobel prize for delivering a hopeful message. I mean, all you need to do is de deliver a hopeful message and uh, book your ticket to Stockholm, right? Or he wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope, uh, Hope and Change, right? Uh, currently, Donald Trump is Make America Great Again, right? There are great days ahead for us. Just jump on my hope train and everything will be fine. That's what these guys do. Nothing more. Right, right. I, that, it, it's, oh, man. But, but, but again, let, I want you just to touch on this again for a second. Uh, Gad Sad is joining me on the phone right now. He's an evolutionary behavioral scientist. Um, it, why does that work again? Because we have these deep-seated fears about what getting our next meal from when we were cavemen. So it's a but. So it's it's several different uh, Darwinian insecurities that we have. It could be mating related, right? I mean. Uh, you know, am I going to be successful in the mating market? It could be related to social status. You know, how am I going to ascend the social hierarchy? Of course, religion caters to the most basal of all of our Darwinian insecurities, my existential angst related to my mortality, right? I mean, as far as we know, we are the only animal that is actually aware that, uh, you know, we are on a death sentence, right? The party is a very short-lived <laughs> party, right? Uh, if I have high cholesterol, I go see my physician, I take the Lipitor pill, and boom, my, my, my bad cholesterol drops. Well, we don't have a pill that magically removes our existential angst unless you buy into some religious narrative, and then suddenly all of your woes disappear. And so politicians are catering to these, whether it be an insecure future, whether it be economic uncertainty, all of these can ultimately be linked back in one way or another to some Darwinian-based insecurity. And they tell you, look, don't worry, I've got the answer for you. I've got the blueprint. Join me and you'll be fine. And it, it's a powerful message, and it, it can be, for certain people, exceptionally lucrative as well, right? And so, so we spend that money readily because they're tapping into these fears, and they sell us. This is why hope is so dangerous, though, isn't it, Cad? Uh, absolutely. Look, uh, just to, to give you in a completely different uh, domain, uh, Charles Revson, who was the founder of Revlin, uh, famously stated, in the factory we, we, the, he's a cosmetics uh, manufacturer. So in the factory, we make cosmetics. In the store, we sell hope, right? So again, right, put this cream on and you will have a reversal of your aging, right? Now, how is that related to Darwinian-based insecurities? Well, we know in the mating market, men choose women as a function of how youthful and how attractive they are, right? And so as women age, of course, if you'd like their mating value decreases. But so you mean if I if I put this if I apply this cream, it reverses aging? Sign me up. Oh man, this is great stuff, Gad. We're gonna we're gonna have you back here soon. We're gonna continue Anytime. these conversations. Gad Sad. Find him on Twitter, by the way. It's at Gad Sad. It's spelled G-A-D S A A D. Follow him today. <laughs> There's always great stuff going. Uh, and you have a YouTube channel as well, right, Gad? I Let's, do. Th so the Sad Truth, uh, S A A D Truth. Uh, get there and enjoy and subscribe. Yourself. Yes, and make sure you're subscribed. I, I was watching the whole little controversy the last. Oh uh, right, thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gad. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon.